My name is Chovav Lapidot. I work for Mana Irrigation, and we're going to spend 30 minutes together this uh, morning or afternoon. We're going to use a just a few slides and then an, a live demo of uh, our sensor-free irrigation scheduling software. That's the, that's the idea. Um, I'm going to put uh, everyone on mute. Um, if you have anything, try to keep it to the end. If not, uh, you know, unmute yourself and, uh, and jump in. Um, I'll, I'll take it uh, with good, uh, good vibes. Um, all right. We're talking about irrigation intelligence. That's, that's what we do in MANA. Um, irrigation intelligence is about improving water use efficiency. Um, and as you know, in, uh, in agriculture at least, improving water use efficiency can come in, in different ways. Um, one of them, for example, would be to improve the delivery system of water to the farm. That's not what we do. Uh, and then the, the, the next circle would be how to effectively bring water to the plant. And this is where our uh, mother company, Review This Irrigation, uh, is a dominant player in, in the world, um, being the number two uh, provider of uh, drip uh, technologies. Um, and we, MANA, is a subsidiary or a daughter company of, of Rivulis. Uh, we focus on irrigation scheduling or answering the question of how much and when to irrigate in order to get the best water use efficiency, um, but also in the easiest way. Um, so when we talk about irrigation decisions or uh, scheduling, you know that different ways of doing it already um, in the market. Uh, some use the traditional way, checking vis visually the, the crop or, or, you know, rub their hands in the dirt or just use their uh, traditional uh, or instincts uh, in order to make those decisions. Some use manuals or irrigation protocols uh, published by uh, academic or research organizations. Um, and the recent technologies that are available uh, that involve soil and plant sensors, soil or plant sensors, um, these are kind of the more te technological way of, uh, of scheduling irrigation. Um, from what we hear, the, the, there are two challenges with, the, with this last one, with the, the um, um, infield sensors. One is that technically they're very hard to um, be installed correctly and maintained, and there are many technical issues as well as uh, practical issues like um, uh, animals damage and uh, they've been stolen and run over with a tractor and many, many different problems. But even if you're able to make them walk, they're going to report only on a very single location in the field. And we all know that there's a great deal of variability in every field. Uh, so you may miss the bigger picture if you use these kind of technologies. And therefore, what we in MANA chose to do um, is to look at the whole field from above or using remote sensing. Um, first, you, you uh, remove the, um, the need or the hassle of maintaining these uh, technologies or equipment. Uh, but on the other hand, you look at the entire field um, and still answer those two questions of how much and when to irrigate. And that's what we call hardware-free or software or, or uh, um, sensor-free irrigation intelligence. In order for me to explain how this magic works, I'm going to go a few steps back to school maybe. Um, Starting with ev evapotranspiration, that's how uh, MANA or the decisions made by MANA um, are done. So evapotranspiration, as you all know, is the combination of evaporation, the water that goes out of the uh, wet soil, and transpiration, the water that the plants uh, use or lose back to the atmosphere using uh, the, uh, the, the water that travels from the soil, through the roots, stems, and then out from the leaves, uh, out to the atmosphere. Um, the physiology of, of the plant shows that the more vegetation or the more leaves you have, the more transpiration um, you will see. Um, 
and if we look at the the uh, kind of well, the way of the season uh, the, the 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 season goes then it starts with maybe more soil evaporation when the plants are small uh, and you see more uh, exposed soil but very soon after planting or after emergence or after bud break um, the crop takes over and during most of the season the transpiration is the dominant uh, outflow of water from an irrigated field. Um, as we said we also know that the crop transpiration correlates very well with vegetation. So from here, if we were able to measure this vegetation, we could uh, 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 understand or we could know how much water we need to uh, irrigate back to this area, to this field. So this is what we do in MANA uh, and we use satellite technology to do that or satellite imagery what you see here on the screen is an example of a satellite image of a real field with um, the color coding here represents density of vegetation so for the illustration um, this red yellow uh, area represents a thin vegetation or not so dense the the index used is NDVI. It's a very popular um, index uh, in remote sensing to measure density of vegetation. So 0 0.4 would represent a low water demand. The mid area or uh, this yellowish green uh, would represent something like 0 0.6 NDVI and a mid a level of water demand and you see the the person who's standing there the corn looks a bit thicker and dense and this dark green area would uh, show healthy very dense vegetation and therefore uh, more water demand and this is uh, more or less how mana calculates the water demand but the fact or the the point is to do it uh, over the entire field and look at every pixel of the field and then uh, drive the decisions based on, um, on, on, on that. There's much more uh, data going into MANA um, in order to make those decisions. Some of it is uh, presented here. Uh, satellite imagery we discussed in order to uh, measure the density of vegetation and the water demand, but there's also a great deal of uh, uh, weather data <clears throat> that's uh, involved. Uh, MANA comes with a uh, global weather service uh, um, included or embedded um, and in some cases you can connect your own weather sources as well uh, and a lot of agronomic data and models that are already uh, either in the system or fed into the database uh, or some setup parameters um, uh, put in by the users they all go together into the uh, MANA model uh, that yields the irrigation recommendations as well as some other um, uh, functionalities. We'll see them all in, in just um, a few minutes. Um, this uh, innovative way of uh, prescribing water um, was already tested thoroughly in, uh, in commercial fields in many different countries and different uh, uh, crops. What you see here is uh, an indication of the improvement of um, water use efficiency. In most cases, we see better results. And bear in mind that even if uh, you show similar results to fields that are monitored by uh, in-field sensors, you get uh, maybe same or better results, but for much less of a cost and operational effort. Um, so that's uh, again on on its own. Just a few stories or success stories, uh, very few examples, but uh, we have um, users in uh, 10 countries now, uh, hundreds of thousands of, uh, of hectares. So uh, one of them would be Celta Uzinho. This is a large coffee grower in uh, Brazil. Um, they started monitoring and, uh, and uh, managing their irrigation with MANA 
two years ago, and now um, the entire farm is covered with the or monitored by by Mana, and they're very happy with the um, the way their irrigation and management uh, uh, is is being uh, uh, operated now. Terepadane is a uh, cooperative of um, uh, processed tomatoes growers in northern Italy. Um, they, they represent about 200 different growers in that area. And uh, one of the uh, services or the uh, technologies they use uh, is MANA uh, over a very large area and a large community of, uh, of growers for the third year now. Um, and uh, LAMSA, just to give it a maybe a slightly different uh, story, LAMSA is a very large dealer of, uh, of Rivulis, the mother company in Mexico and they uh, uh, use MANA to serve better their customers and provide additional uh, like uh, add-on uh, uh, value or services and technology to their growers. In short summary, before we go and see a demo, the value that we we're uh, trying to, to provide to growers, uh, first of all, is a very cost-effective irrigation scheduling solution that requires uh, no hardware, no in installation, and no maintenance. Uh, it's a software-only solution, uh, very affordable, um, that improves the water use efficiency at the end of the, uh, the, end of the season. In addition, there's the satellite images that um, help users or growers to monitor the development of the crop. So they can identify easily and on a timely manner uh, issues and problems um, in many different uh, operational and, uh, and crop uh, related issues and they can respond to them quickly and save uh, potential yield loss. For partners uh, like LAMSA, for example, uh, they report uh, an increased customer intimacy because now they have their uh, you know, some more conversations, some more uh, services provided, agronomy consulting, um, and eventually irrigation scheduling that makes a difference for them. Um, MANA is a uh, subscription-based business, so um, it's a recurring business with very minimal uh, logistics uh, effort. There's no shipping, no inventory, um, and, and, and anything like that. Um, and they differentiate themselves from, uh, from competition. Let's check it out together. Let me just... Okay. So, MANA is a software as a service or a software in the cloud so you can access it from any uh, web browser using your uh, laptop um, or desktop and you can also use the apps on your mobile uh, on your smartphones we have an app for android and an app for um, uh, ios or iphones uh, i'm going to show you today the web app which is a bit more uh, comprehensive and has a bit more functionality uh, but most of the information is available and, and can be used on the smartphone, uh, which is probably the most popular way of, of consuming this data when you're out uh, on the road or in, or in the field all day. So this is um, a, demo, a demo account, but the live system. Um, when you create your own account, you set up your own fields and parameters and you get a username and password when you log in. This is more or less what you see. You start with the farm page um, that shows the uh, weather conditions for today in the farm. The, as I mentioned, this is taken from a global um, a virtual station service with a resolution of uh, five kilometers. So it's like having a weather station or a virtual weather station every five kilometers or uh, three miles. Uh, which is very, uh, it's, it's hyper-local. Um, you can have 
forecast of a few days out. And the other thing is a uh, layout of the entire farm. In this case, we're showing two different uh, blocks or fields. This is a um, uh, table grapes farm in, um, in Mexico, in Sonora. As you can see, it's pretty hot. So the system will also uh, shoot uh, weather alerts to uh, the web and your app on your smartphone. Um, in order to see the schedule, recommended for uh, this field. For example, I'm going to click on it and now we get to the uh, field page uh, with the first tab is the irrigation scheduling. Um, what you see here is a map of this uh, field. It is designed to irrigate in three different zones or valves. So every zone like this is a separate valve that you can get from MANA a recommendation for for every zone or you could manage the whole thing as one unit that's uh, fine as well and in this uh, main screen every zone has a line that shows the previous irrigation date and amount the next planned irrigation and the amount as well as an indicator for the soil water content um, calculated for this for today in this zone. So we're 91% of field capacity. That's why it's blue. If, uh, if it would go lower, uh, closer to the wilting point, then it will turn brown and will start shooting an alerts on you. If I um, just want to see my schedule, so next irrigation for this field, uh, all three valves are going to irrigate on Saturday, more or less the same, 43 mils, millimeters, and, 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 that's, um, and that's fine. But if I want to get into more detailed schedule, then I'll just expand this section, for example. And then what you see here is um, a calendar you can scroll back to the beginning of the season and scroll forward 14 days. So you have a plan 14 days out and the plan includes all the irrigation events. Rain, if there was rain observed in the farm or forecasted, it would appear here. And the soil water content uh, in bars, so uh, the blue ones that hit the feed capacity are when the field is full and then it starts um, drying. Uh, the drying rate is calculated by the forecasted weather and also the vegetation uh, or the evapotranspiration calculated using the uh, satellite data that I explained earlier. So that means this is a true measurement of evapotranspiration or the, the amount of water that goes out of this field. Um, and what goes in is irrigation and rain, uh, plus some other factors of soil type and the root zone uh, depth and, uh, and agronomical uh, models all put together uh, show this uh, uh, soil water content model. If I want to manage my irrigation, I can set up uh, days, uh, fixed days of the week in which I irrigate or interval how many, um, I, I do it here. So this is a fixed days of the week or an interval irrigate every so many days. Um, and then I can easily change it. Let's say that I'm not happy with the 72% um, water content on Friday. So I'm gonna push up this irrigation. So just by dragging and dropping it on a different day, the whole thing will be recalculated and it will tell me if you wanna irrigate on Friday, this would be your amount, 32.2. There's, there's more, uh, a lot more information here uh, for the sake of uh, this uh, short demo today or introduction uh, demo, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, what you need to remember is that you have a, an irrigation schedule for every zone. It shows 14 days out uh, plan and it is based on 
the actual evapotranspiration in the most up-to-date weather, uh, and also the, the, uh, you know, the crop uh, phenology uh, and a lot of agronomy uh, inside. So that's the irrigation schedule part. Um, the second part that I mentioned was the crop monitoring or the satellite images. The data in this, these images is being used by the model to calculate the irrigation needs, but can also be seen here in the form of vegetation maps. What you see here is uh, an image from June 21st, that's what, three days ago. <clears throat> and there's a new image coming every few days, two, three, five days, um, automatically to the account. So you see a pretty good coverage here. And, and what it shows, uh, it, what it shows here is two different ways of looking at NDVI or vegetation density. Um, this one is a standard scale between zero and one, and the one with the yellow and uh, uh, red and green is the one that we saw earlier in the slide, is more to look at the variability. So we see that this side of, of this valve or this zone um, is less vegetative for uh, whatever reason. It could be a problem with the uh, irrigation, it could be a uh, different soil type, uh, sometimes nutrition problem, uh, sometimes even it's just a different variety in these uh, few rows or something like that. Uh, if it's not something that the grower can explain, then that's something that he needs to go and, and uh, explore. Um, in some uh, images, you would see pins that would drop on um, suspicious areas or uh, areas that they call uh, for the grower attention. <clears throat> if the system automatically detects that there's some uh, inconsistency uh, and it uh, analyzes different levels of uh, or different ind indices uh, in order to, uh, to make a suggestion of, of uh, such pin. Um, the other map that I want to show is um, this one that is called plant wetness variability. This is a different way of analyzing the reflection of light or analyzing the data um, that, uh, that is available in the satellite imagery. This is a different index. It measures the plant water potential. It appears to be, it was proven that plants with a lot of um, water in them reflect light in a different way than dry plants. So if you analyze it correctly, you could paint the field in such a way uh, to represent the variability in the plant wetness uh, potential or, um, uh, or, the, or the, the, the plant water content. This is not the soil water content, but the plant. So we see here in this example, um, there's a correlation with the vegetation, um, a viability map, so in these areas, there's uh, less, less of a water uptake by the plants and therefore uh, less vegetation. Um, the reason for that uh, needs to be analyzed. As I mentioned, it could be soil or mechanical or, or uh, you know, problem with irrigation. Uh, but there are many, many things you can learn um, just by looking and analyzing those, uh, those images, irrigation uh, problems, uh, even crop protection problems, um, uh, differences in soil types or patches of uh, different soil types that you can respond to with um, you know, different uh, uh, actions and etc. There's some more uh, functionality here, as uh, we mentioned, uh, we're not gonna cover all of it uh, today. Um, just to share with you, the uh, last thing is the field info is more or less what you need to put in in order to have the system set up. And it is not a lot. So point is that you can set up a field in uh, maybe three, five minutes, and you do it once at the beginning of the season. Uh, so the onboarding or, or setup process is relatively easy. Um, 
the first uh, thing you need to put in is the geometry or the at least the outside boundaries you could uh, do it manually by clicking the uh, you know clicking on on the screen or upload a file with those boundaries if you have this file and then the crop type itself is obviously important um, and some important dates, uh, the structure of the season, um, a little bit of information about your irrigation system, um, what type of system and some uh, specs um, and the soil parameters, which is soil type. The system has a good default taken from a global uh, uh, soil type uh, database from the USDA, which is it's it's pretty good, but the user can change it. And um, some information about salinity, organic matter. These have good defaults, so if you're not sure, you can just leave leave them as they are. <clears throat> so not 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 a lot more. Um, pretty simple setup. With that, um, we're gonna go back to the uh, slides and I can tell you what uh, you can do next and then we'll do questions you can get started actually um, mana as I mentioned is a is an annual subscription uh, there's a price price per acre or per uh, hectare and there is a, like a tiered price if you order more acres you're gonna get better price per acre you can start your own free trial you get 30 days and 30 hectares or 75 acres for free uh, you can log in and create your own account um, on our website it's mana-irrigation.com um, and you can start looking at the data the images the recommendations uh, and play with it and um, you know make your own assessment whether those recommendations are, are valuable for you in order to subscribe, you can uh, uh, either contact your Revulus dealer um, or your Revulus uh, um, um, DSM or representative, or you can contact us at uh, this email, info at manirrigation.com. For small accounts, you can do it yourself in the app itself. That includes a uh, 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 kind of an online payment uh, infrastructure, so you can do it yourself as well. Thank you so much. Let's do a round of questions if there are any. And if you wanna drop, uh, you can uh, move on to your, uh, your business. Just unmute yourself if you have a question. Hold up to uh, uh, bring in the um, yeah. clock. Can you, off, can you do that off of Google Alert? I'm, I'm sorry. Tony, was that you? Can, could you repeat the question? To, to get your property or your plantation area uh, into MANA, can you just transport that from Google Earth? Yes. So you can uh, import a file uh, from Google Earth. Uh, they call it KML or KMZ files. So you upload and then you see it in MANA. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay then, uh, I will leave you with, uh, with these um, contacts or links. Uh, thanks for- uh, One other thing, can we get a sure. copy of this? Yes, we, uh, we're gonna send you a copy and, uh, and a recording of um, of this session, so you could uh, go back to it uh, and a copy of the presentation.